uh, this part of the course is more uh, informational, right? So it's a good idea to read the chapter 3 of the book about this part because this is uh, <coughs> more than the other parts of the course is more kind of heavy information okay, or a lot of information about making the programs. So just bear with these couple of classes about the edX programs and so on. So, we were talking about this uh, making the code of conduct. So, here is an example of a code of conduct for a, in marketing, sales and marketing. So, code is like a list, right? Different list of things that the employee is going to agree to or read. Here we can see, I shall personally maintain the highest standard of ethical and professional conduct in my relationships with my suppliers, colleagues, competitors. Okay? I will not knowingly participate in agreements which may be detrimental to customers. <coughs> well, so I won't participate in things which can cause harm to the customers. Uh, I strive to ensure that products and services are distributed through such channels which will optimize them okay, at the minimal cost. So this is kind of uh, specific to sales and marketing because they could try to find one, two, three middlemen who is all going to make some money right, before they distribute it or charge a very high price for distribution. But here they're saying that they're going to ensure that they are going to distribute the product properly. Okay. So for each whatever business we're in, we can uh, make our some specific points about that business. Uh, we should be clear about what happens if you don't if you do break the code of ethics, right? Are you going to be docked a salary, suspended from work for a week, right? Fired. If you, if you don't follow this, you could be fired, right? Uh, we should have an ethics officer. So we give the documentation, the code of conduct, but we also have more support. Do you understand officer? Police officer? Ethics officer? Just somebody doesn't have be even a full-time job, you could have somebody who's uh, uh, working as the ethics officer in the office, right? They're still doing another job, but somebody who can help them if they don't understand and they can't solve the issue. And we need to uh, reference other ethics documentation, like the professional code of conduct and so on. So, everyday documentation we have work instructions, forms, organizational procedures, these should all be written, remembering that ethics. Okay? When we make all of these documents, we need to think about ethics. Uh, closing a sale should include about disclosure and not deception. Do you understand deception? Deceiving, deception. Yes, so when, if we are doing some document for making the sale, we should have some rules about that we don't deceive people about the price and so on. For example, mortgage lenders, they have a problem where, for, do you know the small print? Very small print. So some people don't read it in very small print. Or sometimes they write in very complicated legal language, like very hard to understand. They make big, very big words that people don't understand, right? So these days in the US, with credit cards, mortgages, these kind of financial products, they're trying to make them very simple, just one page and big writing, okay? And easy words, easy words for people to understand. Because if I, if I write something into small print, you don't understand it, you can get caught out later. It's unethical. So uh, selecting and evaluating suppliers. So, if I'm working in selecting the supplier, I should have a document telling me 
don't use this supplier if they are hiring kids under 16, right? I should know that. But it's better to have this kind of things in this kind of documentation. Okay? Give me a document which tells me if that supplier is doing this or doing this or doing this, then don't uh, use the supplier. So let's discuss uh, some questions with our partner. So I'll give an example of excess virtue advice according to Aristotle. What three things do ethical business people require? In order to become ethical and act ethical, what three things do we need? What is the difference between a compliance and ethics program? Give three things that should be in an ethical vision statement. And we talked about more than three things. And give three things that should be in an ethical code of conduct. So it's like review. Okay, so discuss with your partner. Yeah. 
one's right here. Yes. Okay, so then let's answer the questions. So, uh, Martin, could you answer the first question? Well, I don't know about actually the exact example, but um, when you do something more than you should, um, but, uh, I got an example, but I forgot. Okay, it's, I can say what is it, or uh, it's just basically when you do something more than you should and less uh, than you should and virtue means something. Okay, so if I give you something like uh, courage. Courage, uh, mm -hmm. that's the virtue, yes. something in between. Yes. What's the vice of courage? Um, the vice of courage is... Um, too little. Yeah. Mm. What do we call people who are not courageous? Not self-confident. So cowardly, right? Was the use we use, the word we use. Yeah. And what about too too courageous? Um, is there reckless? Recklessness, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, next question two. What three things do ethical business people require? Uh, Yang Sung Wan. Yes. I want to be ethical. What do I need? Honesty. Okay, that's a, uh, one of the character traits that I need, right? So I need the right character, is one thing. What are your two things I need? I need the right character. We talked about learning to ride a bicycle. So what else do I need? What do I need to learn to ride a bicycle? Practice and one more thing. So we have character, we have experience or practice, and one more thing we need. Hmm? To become et what else can help us to become ethical? The right character, practicing, and Anybody? Knowledge. Knowledge, right? Knowledge, practice, and the right character. What is the difference between a compliance program and an ethics program? Kim Sang Hui. Mm. You're very close to the microphone, you're looking. Compliance is the law. Yeah, right? like the rules. But yeah. uh, ethics is just encouraging the people. Okay. So encouraging the people, making process and system yeah. for them to act ethically. <coughs> okay. So uh, next is question four. Give three things that we should have in an ethical vision statement. We saw a list of. Uh, five things. Uh, Wong Esther. Character traits. Character traits. 
character traits like we want of our employees, right? Like we saw in the vision statement, we saw integrity, right? And long-term success linked to ethical and legal conduct. So we, we say that, like we saw in the ethics statement example, our reputation is improved by acting ethically and reputation is important for our success, right? One more thing. Importance of stakeholders. So we mentioned our stakeholders. So we saw in the in the ethics statement, we saw the consumers or the customers, the employees were mentioned in the ethics statement, right? So next is uh, number five. Give three things that should be in an ethical code of conduct. Uh, Kim Da Gyeong. Again, you're close to the microphone. So what kind of things do we need to have in our code of conduct? Okay, so say that the CEO or the executives are committed to this code, right? <coughs> Okay, give people some examples of common problem, right? Uh, yes. How to solve. Specifically related to uh, job functions. Okay, so make some specific, we saw in the marketing, some specific thing about distribution, right? If we're making a contract of sales, we have to make sure that the information is all present and so on. So well done, so good answers to the questions. So let's move on. So we're going to talk about, continue to talk about processes, organizational processes, and ethics in the everyday operation. So <clears throat> we should make a document of our organizational processes and identify stakeholder interactions, expectations and rights within these processes. So, I guess we should look at a process map. Have you ever seen a, a process map? Before? Process mapping, have you heard of process mapping? Process mapping is that, let's say I want to pay an invoice. Do you understand the invoice? Like paying a bill in the company. What do I do first? I need to check the goods, right? check everything is okay in the box, right? Then I need to get, go to some office to get a stamp. Then next I need to come back and uh, uh, then I need to get the authorization to pay. Then I need to send a check in the post. So it's a process, different steps in this kind of system. So we do, we can make a map which shows uh, this process. So we can see this kind of thing here, right? So this is a process map. So if we had a the process was simply making breakfast, we would make a simple map, right? Prepare ingredients, cook ingredients, serve ingredients. <laughs> this is process mapping, okay? It looks complicated, but that's actually quite simple. It's telling us how to... What's the process, the steps for making breakfast? What about in the business? Okay, uh, we have some... a little bit more... It's not clear to read here, right? But we can make this kind of... Sometimes they put in different triangles and boxes and so on, okay? Depending on the different steps and who is going to do what, okay? So, this kind of thing is a process. This is quite a big one, right? Process map in the organization. So what we're going to do is we have, this is just randomly, process map for doing an interview, right? So let's say that we have, uh, 
we have, first of all, we need to contact the candidate, right? To come to the interview. Then we need to choose the people who are giving the interview, the interviewers, right? Then we need to interview the candidate, okay? Then we need to discuss about the candidate. Then we need to decide. Then we need to send a letter to the candidate to see if they've been hired or not. So we make a process. It might sound silly, but businesses do this. They actually make the process and they make a map like this. You can use a Microsoft tool to make this map, okay? It's easy. Put in the symbols and write in things, okay? Then once you've made a process, then everybody is going to follow this process in your company. Okay, it's a process map that people are going to follow for doing interviews. They all follow the same step. So when we're talking about edits, is we're talking about looking at the process and saying, where can I make the change to make this more ethical or solve the ethical problem? My ethical problem is 50% of my candidates are women, 50% are men. But 90% of our new employees are men and 10% are women. So I'm going to look at the process and I'm going to say, where, what point of the process can I change that will make, solve this ethical problem? Okay. So I, I'm going to change here. Choosing the people for the interview, interviewers. One person should be a woman. Okay. So I looked at the process and I made a change in the process. So this is uh, process mapping. Um, so here we say, document the processes. Document the processes means this. Go to Microsoft, right? M make, a, make a document like that, okay? And we can identify interactions with the stakeholder, interaction with the interviewee, right? Expectations and rights. We can see the rights, equal treatment. So we look at each process and we, we go through these steps. Then we regularly conduct gap analysis between theory and practice. So gap analysis means, in theory, we should have one woman at the interview. Right? In practice, is that happening? So I, should, I can go to the interview just suddenly and check, open the door. Is it all men or is there a woman there? Right? Prevent unethical conduct before it occurs. So checking and reducing the likelihood is preferable to increasing the means of detection. So say that I have somebody who I think is stealing from the company. Right? I need to find, put something in the process to stop them from stealing in the company. Right? Maybe here I make some process that every day, this is very simple, but every day at 10 to 5, before the people leave the company, I make an announcement about, st about not stealing, right? Could be a short-term measure, but it's making some way to try and stop uh, this. Or just change the process of the work. Like, for example, if they're working in a chewing gum factory. They're stealing the chewing gum from the place, right? So put a camera. Put a camera over the place where you think they're stealing. Install a camera. So we're changing the process or changing because preventing is, is better than cure. Did you ever hear that saying in English? Prevention is better than cure. Dentists always use that for your teeth. It's better to brush your teeth than cure later. So it's the same for the company. It's better to make the process in a, in a way that it, we are going to have people acting ethically. And then we, we have to, we make these objectives and initiatives. So we're going to install a camera on that area of the work, right? We're going to have a woman on the board. But what do we do next? We have to assign responsibility for their completion. And I said this is important in the real world. Okay? So uh, you are responsible for install making sure the cameras are turned on, the batteries are in the cameras, right? It's being recorded. That's your job. Okay? then you are responsible, you're doing another job, right? But you have some volunteer job or you're on some committee to make sure that th there is always a woman present at all the interviews, okay? And if there's not, you're going to be in trouble. Okay, so we have to 
have these initiatives and assign responsibilities. Now, I wouldn't say, I'm just doing an example, but I wouldn't say to you, if you don't do this, you're going to be in trouble, right? I wouldn't say that in a job. Just I give you the responsibility. So it's clear. Probably I want to write it down somewhere as well, by email or somewhere else. So, these are kind of objectives and initiatives we can have. We want to improve our stakeholders' perceptions about our ethical performance. We want our customers to think we're an ethical company, our employees to think we're an ethical company. We want to comply with internationally recognized environmental and social standards. So, if we think about the International Forestry Organization, do we have to follow what the International Forestry Organization says? By law? Do you understand forest forestry? Do you understand forestry? Forest? Do you like the forest? Yes. In Korea you have a lot of forests? Yes. How do you say forest in Korean? So, do you like the soap? Yes. Do you go there with your parents at the weekend? Yes. Yes? When I came to Korea at first, people told me, oh, what do you do at the weekend? They said, I go hiking. I thought it was quite boring, right? Because I was from Ireland. We don't have that nice places for hiking like Korea. In Korea, you have a lot of mountains and forests. In Ireland, we don't have many forests for hiking in. The air is very fresh and the views are nice, right? So anyway, we have this international forestry organization, an NGO. They have some standards, which is, they suggest that companies should follow. Should, do companies have to follow those standards by law? If I don't follow what the international forestry organization says, am I going to jail? No. No, it's just an NGO. They're giving a suggestion, right? But, if companies do that, if they comply with these internationally recognized, this is internationally recognized NGO, right? It's not just somebody in their mother's house who made their, I want to save the forests, right? Made their own organization. So if they're big internationally recognized organization, right? Like, do you know the animal, the World Wildlife Federation, right? Uh, UNESCO for culture, those kind of work, international ones. So. We can comply with what they suggest for the companies. Promote supplier compliance with the standards. Tell our supplier, I want you to, to comply with this, otherwise I'll change to another supplier. Reduce the cases of illegal conduct. Employee awareness, training and moral development. Okay? We can consider ethical conduct when we're hiring or giving a promotion. When we're evaluating our employees, we can put in ethical conduct. So these are all initiatives that can come from the initiatives from the management. Management has this idea. Let's follow the forestry, international forestry organization suggestion, okay? About the environment. So we don't cut down any trees near our factory. We plant some trees around our factory, okay? Any extra space we have, we're going to plant some trees. It's an initiative. Then, what do I need to do next after I have the initiative? Just have a great idea and tell everybody. Do we need to plant more trees? No, what do I need to do? Assign responsibility, okay? So I have the initiatives, I assign responsibilities. And we, here we can make a box on the evaluation form. How do you feel your ethically performed last year? One to 10, okay? So that kind of thing. So, we are going to talk more about uh, some moral philosophy later, but we'll just briefly mention it uh, here. So, after we have done our stakeholder management, right, we're deciding what's good for everybody, stakeholder management, right? What benefit can we do for all these people? Balance it. Try to improve our stakeholders' abilities, okay? That's increasing the overall benefit for everybody. Next we move into rights. Rights. We should make our decisions based on is it right, is it wrong? Are we depriving people of their rights? Are we discriminating, right? Then we have an ethics program and code of conduct, right? 
So we, we've already done a lot to make sure that our company is acting in the right or proper way. But we still have something else, which can be moral philosophy, right? So people themselves, the workers themselves, can have their own philosophy that helps them to make ethical decisions. Because sometimes, even though we've done all of these processes and codes of conducts and everything, sometimes people have to make a decision which is not included in the code, right? Or is not clear from the other part. So they have to use their own idea or philosophy to solve the problem. So this is going on even further. So moral philosophy are principles or rules that people use to decide what is right or wrong. Okay, if you're Buddhist, your rules are slightly different than Christian or Hindu or Muslim, right? Other people just have their own idea, they're not religious, right? So, presents guidelines for determining how to settle conflicts, conflicts in human interests. Guides business people in making strategies and in solving ethical issues. No single moral philosophy is accepted by everyone. I said, if there's anything close to that, it's what's written in the UN, right? Something like, uh, treat other people like you would like to be treated by them. Do you understand that phrase? Treat other people like you would like to be treated by them, right? That's kind of a general moral philosophy that most religions and philosophers agree on. Okay? But after this, they kind of change a little bit. The details can be different. So there is no single moral philosophy accepted by everyone. So let's have a look at some different uh, philosophies. So the first one is teleology. You don't have to remember this, this name. Okay? I'm not going to test you on the name. Just the idea. So <coughs> if something produces a result such as pleasure, knowledge, career, growth, the realization of a self-interest or another utility, something useful, then it's morally right or acceptable. So this is called consequentialist. Do you understand consequence? What are the consequences if you cheat on the exam? What is the consequence? Fail the exam, right? So consequentialist means look at the end. The end point. What is the consequence of your action? Does it produce something that you want? Yes, then it's morally right. Right? So this way of thinking. The next one is uh, deontology. Refers to moral philosophies that focus on the rights of individuals and intentions associated with a particular behavior. So believe that individuals have an absolute right. So this is more to do with rights, right? Then the last one was more to do with the result. Okay. So do you know euthanasia? I'm not talking about I'm not talking about the euthanasia. Right? I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about euthanasia. Maybe I'm going to spell it wrong. It's a medical term. I probably spelled it. I guess I spelled it wrong. Right? Euthanasia is when somebody is very sick and they want to die. Right? So they, they turn off the machine or whatever is keeping them alive. Okay? It's a very complicated subject. But if we looked at these two different philosophies, deontology might say, uh, that they have, because of the right to life is so important, then don't allow them, right, to do that. But the other guy might say, the result is better for that person. They want, they, they're in pain, so they would prefer not to be in pain anymore. So the end result is better, so the consequence is better, right, in the first one. But here they're saying, no, you shouldn't. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't turn off the machine. It's like killing somebody, right? So a little bit different way of, of, of uh, we're, as I say, in a couple of few weeks we'll do a class on this area. 
right? Uh, talk about this in more detail. Uh, cultural relativism. Uh, in this case, ethical behavior is gained from experience by observing uh, cultures. So, <clears throat> the culture is doing something this way, then that culture learns about how to do the right thing. So, if we follow them or copy them, then it's okay. But the problem here is, what if we have two different cultures? Then which one is right? It's not easy. Okay, and then we have virtue ethics. Uh, what is moral in a given situation? This is what Aristotle was talking about, right? What, a moral, what is moral in a given situation is what the situation requires. And what a person with a good moral character would deem appropriate. So we can see words here like appropriate, good. Okay, so Aristotle was saying, this is the right amount. This is the, do you understand appropriate? Yes? What is an appropriate gift to give people in Korea? An elephant? It's too much, right? According to Aristotle, that's too much, right? P, too little. So what's appropriate as a gift for... Korean people, if I go to your house, me, just yourself, you don't need a gift, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> huh? <laughs> a bath of fruit, dish. a dish. Mm -hmm. Do you give gifts? Do your parents ever give gifts if they go somewhere in Korea? Mm, yes. Yes. So whatever people deem appropriate, he said, what the situation requires, what a person with a good moral character will do. Not, not an extreme, not another extreme in the middle. So we can see that there's not one moral philosophy. People have different ways of thinking about things. So just discuss with your partner just quickly about euthanasia. What do you think about euthanasia? In some countries, like Netherlands, it's legal for people to do that, but in other countries it's not legal. So what do you think? If people want in the hospital, on the life support machine, they want to die, can the doctor turn off the machine or not? So discuss with your partner. What do you think? What is, could be your moral philosophy? <laughs> Okay, so uh, in J. Hong. What would you say? So in J. Hong? Yes, what would you say? Do you think the doctor should turn off the machine or leave the machine on? Turn off the machine, the person dies. They want the doctor to turn off the machine. Or do you think the doctor should leave the machine on? Which one? Turn off or turn on? Turn on, leave on. Right, so it seems that you're more on this side. Deontology, right? Rule, right? So individuals have some rights. And we can follow the rule, like you shouldn't kill or you shouldn't commit Suicide, that kind of rule, right? All rights. So, uh, then let's discuss uh, justice, fairness. So, 
uh, distributive justice. So we evaluate the results of a business relationship. Procedural justice, based on the processes and activities that produce the outcome or result. Interactional justice, based on an evaluation of the communication processes used in the business relationship. So, uh, don't worry about the different types too much, just the definition, right? We're looking at fairness, justice and fairness. So this, the next two slides are two of the most important slides in the course. You'll be doing your midterm exam assignment on this part. We're going to talk about it in a minute, right? So this is an ethical decision-making procedure. So this is summing up what we have just, we've studied about the stakeholder management, right? We've studied about rights. We've studied about ethical programs and morals, a little bit about uh, values and morals, right? Fairness. So we need to put that together to help us to make a decision. We have to make a decision. So in the midterm, Silent, you will be given a case study where somebody has to make a decision, right? And you have to decide what are you going to do. Hopefully it will be the right ethical decision. So first we have to gather the facts. Then we identify the stakeholders. Identify the stakeholders' claims. Think about the long and short term consequences, right? Identify our obligations to the stakeholders. So here we're talking stakeholder management stakeholder claims, and so on, right? Identify our obligations. Rights, we're talking about rights and responsibilities. Next, we're going to consider our character, our integrity, right? The company's vision statement, the company's values. Think creatively about potential action, actions. We can look at the best practice in the, in the field, okay? Think creatively how we can find a solution. Finally, Form an argument that supports your decision. In this case, we're not talking argument like blah, 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 right? Not that kind of argument. Okay, different type of argument. Argument is in a discussion, is your point of view. So an argument is a set of premises or statements that logically lead to a conclusion. So we're going to use logic. You have to have an argument to support your decision. You can't say just yes or no. You have to say yes because logically make your Argument. So here's an example of an argument. Forcing employees to stand at their workstation for over 12 hours without a break is consistent with accepted definitions of torture. So what's this argument based on? Hmm? What is this logic is this argument based on? Standing for over 12 hours with no break is torture. What are we talking about? Rights, okay? The rights of the worker we're using. The right not to be tortured is a fundamental human right. Does that make sense? Is that logical? That's an argument, right? So we went through all the stakeholders. One of the important ones was obligations to stakeholders. Number five, okay? And we found out that we were, in fact, breaking the stakeholders' rights. So let's have a look at the midterm assignment you can find on the internet. So I'm showing you this now. I know you have another assignment to do, but the other assignment is just kind of like a homework. You don't have to spend too long on it, right? It's just five paragraphs or less than one A4 page, okay? This one is more important. The other assignment is 10%. This one is... 30%. It means you should spend three times the time on this one than the other one. Okay? So you can keep the same teams if you'd like. If you want to change your team for the midterm assignment, you can let me know. Okay? Otherwise, you can stay in the same group. So uh, this the midterm assignment is due in week eight, right? So later than the other one. Usually you have exams, right, in week eight, but I just want you, you're going to make this report, and you're just going to come up and just briefly talk about the case and your decision, okay? So you're going to make a report, 
uh, and then you're going to come up. You don't have to make, if you like, you can make a PPT to support you, but you don't have to make a PPT. You're just going to tell us, this was the case, these are the facts of the case, briefly, right? And this is what we decided, right? We looked at the stakeholders' claims, we looked at the rights, we saw there was a conflict, we talked creatively, we decided this logical argument. Okay, so just about five to seven minutes for each group. Okay, just to talk about your talk about your report. So it's an ethical dilemma. Okay? So we use the chapters one, two, and three in the book, right? Uh, so we can look back at the book and we can look back at the PPT and see the ideas that we learned in the book and the PPT in what we studied in chap the last three chapters. And then we need to prepare a two to three page report following the structure on this ethical decision or ethical dilemma. So just like we saw a little bit like the decision making process, stakeholder management, identify the stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders in the case? You don't have to say all the stakeholders. The stakeholders are relevant to the case. What are the claims of the stakeholders? Okay, what does the employee want? What does the company want? Don't forget your, your, uh, the owners of the company could be a stakeholder too, right? Then what is good for stakeholders, for society? You have to put their claims might be conflicting. Can we develop our stakeholders' capabilities to improve the situations? Think about the long term and the short term. At this link we can see about best practice in the industry. Uh, this link gives us the most ethical companies. Right? They make a list of the most ethical companies. So we could do some benchmarking there. Okay. Uh, what is the right thing to do? So we study first class was stakeholder management, right? Second class was doing what is looking at rights, duties and obligations, okay? So what does the company policy say? What does the law say? Is it illegal? Could be a very easy answer. If it's illegal, we can't do that, right? Are there any fundamental rights involved? Like torture? Are there any derivative rights involved? Okay, is there any special obligation group? Can we find a special obligation group? Then, what do you think a virtuous person would do? We talked about virtue. What virtues are relevant to the case? Okay, and then finally, so we, we, in this case we're talking about what we talked about today, right? With the virtues and uh, moral philosophy and thinking, right? Then, you have to make your argument. The most important part, right? You looked at all these things, what are you going to do? What we can often find is that the rights is going to say one thing, and then what is good for society might be different. Right? So we might have a conflict here between what's better for society and what rights are saying. So we might have to decide. It's not going to be an easy decision, right? What to do? And then we have to make an argument to support our decision. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> try to find some data or something to support your argument. Okay, so we can also deal with some counter argument. Try to explain your moral principle. In your case, your moral principle was leave the machine on because that's the right thing to do. Right? I sh he shouldn't commit suicide, and I shouldn't help him to commit suicide. You think that's wrong? Okay, that's your moral philosophy. So explain your, your moral principle. Okay? So what are we going to use for this? Uh, we're going to choose, you can choose a case from uh, here, which I put on the website. This is a, a competition in the US. They have, you can go to the homepage if you want. They have a competition every year. Uh, like uh, Intercollegiate Ethics Bowl. So it's the between the college between the universities in the US, they have an Ethics Bowl national championship. Do you want to enter? Yeah. Fly to the US <laughs> and go there. 
So what they do is they do the same thing. Like they give you the case, and you whoever can solve the case and makes the best argument wins the trophy at the ethics bowl. But it's, it's already finished. Twenty second of February. Okay. So uh, I understand that these cases were made for native speakers, right? But they're just one page long. So try to understand the case. If you have a problem, you can ask me, okay? Uh, there are 15 cases, so just choose one case. Big Pharma, show me the money, photo bomb, fire away, right? They're mostly just a page long. There's 15. So just choose one of these cases with your group and try to solve the ethical dilemma using the system, okay? Do you have any questions? No? Okay, so we can discuss more in the next class, okay, or another time. Do you have any questions? So then let's finish there for today.